Canada Conversations are a creation of IOM, made available under the Creative Commons 3.0 IGO. Please refer to the text of the audiobook for the copyright mark and the full legal code. Funded by Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada. Financé par Immigration, Refugees et Citoyenneté Canada. O Canada Conversations, Dialogue No. 6, Supports and Services. The following dialogue is related to Unit 2 Travel and Unit 3 Supports and Services from the Canadian Orientation Abroad Participant Workbook. For more information, refer to the following units of the Canadian Orientation Abroad Participant Workbook. 2.1. Resettlement, Hopes and Fears. 2.23. Where can you apply for Canadian citizenship? 3.1. Resettlement Programs to Canada. 3.2. Limits of Immediate Settlement Supports. 3.3. Common Services of Resettlement Programs. 3.4. Immediate Settlement Supports. 3.5. Roles and Responsibilities. 3.6. Change of Destination. 3.8. Important Documents in Canada. The Canadian Orientation Abroad Facilitator, Ali, Sadia, Obasi, and other refugees are in the Canadian Orientation Abroad Session Room. A childminder takes Sadia's and Obasi's children to the childminding room until the session is over. The facilitator tells the attendees they can talk amongst themselves for a few minutes before the Canadian Orientation Abroad Session begins. Hello, Ali. Good to see you again. Hi, Sadia. Nice to see you too. Obasi is not here yet. I think he is late because he is coming from his wife's medical appointment. She just had a baby and is recovering. Oh, I see. The Canadian Orientation Abroad facilitator starts the session. Hello, everyone. Do you remember when we talked about your hopes and fears? Yes, I do. It is normal to have mixed feelings about moving to a country you do not know well. There are settlement services that are free to all newcomers. These services will help you meet other newcomers who are having similar challenges. They can support you as well. Can everyone get those services? Regardless of your resettlement program, all permanent residents who resettle as refugees to Canada have access to common services of resettlement programs and immediate settlement supports. So, whether you have fears about resettling into a new community or transferring your education credentials, there are services to help you. So, we will be able to receive these services regardless of our resettlement programs. Yes. Let us talk about immediate settlement supports that all resettled refugees going to Canada can access. This will be important information you should look at again once you get there. I am sure you will have a lot of questions, so do not be afraid to ask. Let me grab my pen and paper. I want to make notes. The Government of Canada has a long tradition of welcoming people from all over the world. They have programs that offer safety and new beginnings to refugees who are fleeing persecution and face security risks in their country. They are called Refugee Resettlement Programs. That is good to know. What do you mean by resettlement programs? Resettlement programs define which supports and services are available to resettled refugees as they settle into their communities and where these supports and services come from. After you pass through immigration procedures at your first airport in Canada and receive permanent resident status, you will also have access to different types of supports that will help you adjust to your new life in Canada. Where these supports come from differs 
depending on the resettlement program you are assigned to. There are four different resettlement programs, right? I think I have heard of them. Yes, that is right. The Government of Canada approves resettlement applications under four different categories or resettlement programs. The first program is the Government Assisted Refugees Program. The second program is the Private Sponsorship of Refugees Program. The third program is the Joint Assistance Sponsorship Program. And the fourth program is the Blended Visa Office Referred Program. All refugees who are selected to come to Canada under these programs become permanent residents once they arrive in Canada. I was told I am with the Private Sponsorship of Refugees Program because I have a private sponsor. That is right. Your sponsor will provide you with immediate settlement support and financial support. Who are the sponsors? Sponsors can be private groups, such as a group of five people, or institutions, such as faith-based groups or community organizations. I have a sponsor, too. I heard some people in this orientation do not have a sponsor. Who will provide support for them and their families? For refugees who do not have sponsors, they will be under the Government Assisted Refugees Program. Individuals receive financial support from the Government of Canada, and they receive immediate settlement support from government-funded organizations, not from a sponsor. Do not worry. Regardless of the resettlement program, all resettled refugees receive financial support and immediate settlement support. The difference is where those supports come from. I have never heard of a government-funded organization. Are they part of government? No, they are not. They are funded by the government, but do not work for them. These agencies help all newcomers settle into their new community. All permanent residents, including those who did not resettle to Canada as refugees, can access these long-term services until they become Canadian citizens. Government-funded organizations are also called settlement agencies, and they are common in Canada. I see. Let us move on to the third program, the Joint Assistance Sponsorship Program. With the Joint Assistance Sponsorship Program, individuals receive financial support from the government and immediate settlement support from government-funded organizations. Refugees under Joint Assistance Sponsorship are like government-assisted refugees, except they have private sponsors who provide them with additional support in Canada. Has anyone here been assigned to the Joint Assistance Sponsorship Program? I have not, but I know a friend who has. He has a son who has special needs. What is the fourth program? The fourth program is the Blended Visa Office Referred Program. With this program, individuals receive part of their financial support from the government and part from their private sponsors. Their private sponsors also provide immediate settlement support. I see. Any questions about this section of the training session? I have a question. Why does some of the financial support come from the government and some from private sponsors? If the support comes from the government, the money comes from the taxes that all Canadians pay. If the support comes from private sponsors, it means the financial support comes directly from a group of community members or an organization. What kind of settlement services do refugees get at government-funded organizations for all newcomers? That is exactly what we are going to talk about now. 
Let us look at what type of services are available to help you settle in Canada. Government-funded organizations for all newcomers can help you register for free language classes, help you learn to look for a job, give you advice on how to get your credentials recognized, resolve settlement challenges, and more. I was worried I would not have any help when I get to Canada. That is a relief. The immediate settlement support you will receive in Canada, whether from your government-funded organization or your sponsors, is also limited. The length of time that these supports last depends on the resettlement program and may change depending on your circumstances. Will someone help us at the airport when we arrive in Canada? Yes, there is help at the first airport when you arrive in Canada. That is part of common services of resettlement programs that all permanent residents who resettle as refugees in Canada have access to. An airport reception service will help you go through immigration and customs and help you travel to your final destination. How do I find the airport reception service staff person? When you arrive in Canada, make sure to keep your IOM bag visible. That way, the airport reception services staff can find you. But if you cannot find them, you can ask airport staff members to direct you. Also, do not forget to keep all your baggage and documents safe and with you at all times throughout the journey. In addition to these common services of resettlement programs, you will receive immediate settlement support from a government-funded organization or your sponsors when you arrive in Canada. So, all refugees will have access to the assistance you just mentioned, no matter which resettlement program we are under. Yes, correct. If you arrive between October 15th and April 15th, a government-funded organization or your sponsors will provide you with winter clothes. Your government-funded organization or your sponsors will also arrange temporary accommodation for you when you first arrive in Canada and will arrange your transportation to get there. What are other types of support we can receive? As part of common services of resettlement programs, you can receive an immigration loan from the Government of Canada that will cover the cost of your travel to Canada you will be required to start repaying this interest-free loan one year after you arrive in Canada. You will also receive temporary health care coverage under the Interim Federal Health Program. This will cover essential medical services until you can access your province's health care program. This will also cover additional medical services while you are receiving financial support from the government or your sponsors. My friend told me about long-term settlement support. Can you tell us more about it? As you settle in Canada, your government-funded organization or your sponsors will refer you to long-term settlement support. They will help you access medical services if there is an urgent medical need. They will help you apply for important documents in Canada and explain their importance. They will provide or help you receive financial support and give you advice on how to responsibly spend the limited amount of money you receive. They will help you open a bank account and explain how to access and use money in Canada. They will explain important rules and regulations in Canada. They will help you find permanent housing and help you understand your rental contract. They will provide you with new or used household items. They will give you an orientation of your new community and explain how to use public transportation. 
That is very nice. I am glad that a support system is in place. I have a question regarding the medical care in Canada that you just mentioned. I have a child with food allergies, and my aging mother-in-law has to take certain medications. What should I do? Once you arrive in Canada, explain your situation to your government-funded organization or your sponsors. They can help you access medical services. You and your family will have access to certain health care services through the Interim Federal Health Program. Should I take all my medical records with me when I go to Canada? Yes, you should. Do not forget to take your medical records and prescription history with you. I have a question, though. What is the difference between settlement support and financial support? Settlement supports include many types of guidance and advice from government-funded organizations or sponsors on settling in Canada. They provide you with temporary accommodation and warm clothes if you arrive in the winter. Settlement supports also include helping you find a permanent home. Your government-funded organization or your sponsors will also help with furniture and basic household items for your new home, as well as the other types of support I mentioned. Will my sponsors help me with enrolling my children in school? Yes, they will help you enroll your children in school. Government-funded organizations or sponsors will also help you understand the education system in your province or territory. They will also help adults enroll in free language classes. That is good to know. I would appreciate their support very much. The services you just talked about are settlement supports. What about financial support? Financial support is the money given to you by the government or by your sponsors to cover your basic needs, like paying your rent and buying food. Does everyone get the same amount of money? The amount you receive in financial support will depend on many factors, like your family's size, the ages of family members, where you live, and your family's needs. So, that means I can ask for anything and my sponsor or the government will pay for it? No. The financial support you will get is limited. It is only enough to cover your basic needs. If you spend it all before the end of the month, you will not get more. That is why you will need to manage your money carefully. Sponsors or government-funded organizations will give you advice about this. I see. I understand the difference more clearly now. Thank you. Keep in mind, even though you will receive many kinds of support in Canada, you are also responsible for some things once you arrive and settle there. Can anyone think of something you will be responsible for as a newcomer to Canada? I know that when we live in Canada, we have to budget our own expenses, but we will get advice from those helping us. Very good. Is there anything else you can think of? We are responsible for keeping our official documents safe. We will be getting important documents like our permanent residence card, and it is up to us to keep all our documents safe. Exactly. You should know what your documents mean, how to use them, and how to renew them on time. Do not lend your documents to other people, or let other people use them. Keep this information private, especially your social insurance number. Only give out this number if it is legally required. Can you remind me which documents we will need to keep safe? After you arrive in Canada, you will get a permanent resident card, a social insurance number, and a provincial health card. 
your permanent resident card will be mailed to you. This will serve as official proof of your status as a permanent resident in Canada. This card does not replace your confirmation of permanent residence, which you sign at the airport when you arrive in Canada. You must keep both. Your social insurance number is the number required to work in Canada and to apply for government programs and benefits. Your provincial health card will allow you to access publicly funded health care services. You should apply for your health card as soon as possible after your arrival in Canada. What about banking information? The same thing goes for keeping your banking information safe. Related to banking, your sponsors or government-funded organization will help you open a bank account and teach you how to manage your money. But it is up to you to pay all banking fees and charges related to your loans and credit cards. Can I ask my sponsor to keep important documents for me? You should remember that your identity documents belong to you. No one, including your sponsors, settlement worker, family members, or an employer, should keep your documents for you. Okay. Once you move into permanent housing, what kind of responsibilities do you think you will have? We should take care of our home by keeping it clean and in good condition. That is right. Once you have found permanent housing, you should keep the place in good condition and respect the rules of your rental contract. Your government-funded organization or your sponsors will help you read and understand your rental contract. To stay safe in your new home, make sure to keep your doors locked and safely use your appliances. Will someone teach me how to use appliances? Your government-funded organization or sponsors will show you how to stay safe in your housing and how to use the appliances. That is good. What about your new community? What are your responsibilities as a permanent resident in Canada? I think we should know the laws and rules of the country and not break them. Good. What else? I think that we should learn about our new community. I heard we can attend language classes. If we need to improve English or French, language classes could help with that. You are correct. In these language classes, you can meet other newcomers. Your children will make new friends when you enroll them in school. You can meet other children's parents and speak to your children's teachers to talk about their education. I am excited to make new friends in Canada. It is good to make friends with people in your community, your neighbors, co-workers, even people you meet in different activity groups. I have a question. I am curious about the process to apply for Canadian citizenship. How long does it take and what are the requirements? Before you apply for Canadian citizenship, you must be in Canada for a certain amount of time. You can check online to calculate how long you have to be in Canada before you can apply for citizenship. You must be physically present in Canada for a minimum number of days to keep your permanent resident status too. We also have to pass a test, right? Yes, that is right. You must know some English or French language, and you must pass a test to prove you have some knowledge of Canada. Only then will you be granted Canadian citizenship. And then I can apply for a Canadian passport. Yes, that is correct. What if I want to travel outside of Canada before getting Canadian citizenship? You can use your current passport if you have one, or apply for a travel document issued by the Government of Canada if you cannot get a passport from your country of origin. Whenever you re-enter Canada, you must present your valid permanent resident card to the immigration authorities. 
What if I want to move to a different town where my friend lives? She says there are a lot of jobs there. You have the right to choose where you will live in Canada, but you are strongly encouraged to travel to your original destination. There, you will get the support based on your settlement needs. If I do want to move, what should I think about? If you are thinking of moving, you should consider these five things. One, before you move, you must notify your sponsors or government-funded organization as soon as possible to avoid any break in financial support and immediate settlement support. Two, if you choose to move, you are responsible for all the costs related to moving to a different community, including travel and accommodation. Three, you will need to prepare for your arrival and temporary accommodation at the new destination by yourself. Four, if you resettle with the Government Assisted Refugee Program or the Joint Assistance Sponsorship Program, there could be a delay in getting your financial support. Five, if you resettle with the privately sponsored refugee program or the blended visa office referred program, you may no longer be eligible for financial or settlement support if you do not live in the same community as your sponsors. I heard a lot of work goes into preparing for me to settle in my new community before I arrive. Yes, that is right. For example, when you are assigned to a particular town or city, either your sponsors or government-funded agency have already organized temporary accommodation for you before you get there. They may have already fundraised or found new or used furniture for you, looked for permanent housing options close to schools for your children, and more. I heard sometimes refugees are sent to communities that have special support. Yes, it is important to take that into account. Refugees are assigned to communities that have special support, such as people who speak their language, a particular place of worship, programs for children with special needs, or language classes. Some of these things might not be available if you go somewhere else. This is why you are strongly encouraged to travel to your original destination. There, you will get the support based on your settlement needs. That is important to know. Thank you. Thank you. I learned a lot in this session. No problem. I am glad it was helpful. End of Dialogue Unit